not just a rivalry. It's a way of life. Welcome to... War Eagle Roll Tide. Good evening and War Eagle Roll Tide. Welcome. Once again, Thursday night, 7-ish. Glad to have everybody in. If you are uh, just joining us, we'd appreciate it if you'd like and share the video. Tag some friends who love their Auburn Tigers, Alabama Crimson Tide, and let's get after it. Going to have a very special guest calling in here in about 10 or 15 minutes, Jeff Allen. He's the director of sports medicine there at the University of Alabama, also the head football athletic trainer, and something very interesting, and we will get into it tonight. Everybody who's been to a college football game, whether in person or watching on TV, you see the medical tents mm-hmm. over on the sidelines that when a player gets banged up, gets injured, he will go in there with the medical staff, the trainers or whatnot. Jeff Allen at the University of Alabama invented that. He's the one that started it, brought it to the game. Not sure how long it's been around. It's been several years, but now every team has that. And he's going to be good enough to spend some time with us here tonight. I think it's going to be very interesting. I think the, for those of you that are in, you're certainly going to stick around and hear what he has to say. I'm looking forward to Jeff Allen calling in. I concur. <laughs> that that tent's famous, by the way. It really is. It's it really tent. is. That that tent got on SEC shorts for you and yeah, I did. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little that's, pissed. That, at that day's coming though. That <laughs> okay. day's coming. All right. Okay. All right. We you keep begging and they'll let us on we're, we're eventually. Gonna, if we keep bothering them, yeah, well, forget that, begging. You know that's our plan. Them. That's how I got that's married. Exactly. I bothered my wife till she <laughs> gave in. Week one in the books. Victory Tour 2019 in full effect. How about those Open Tigers? I loved your live feeds, by the way. They, they were great. Well, you know, a little, little shaky. Camera work's not quite as good well, as Ken. Let, let, me, let me say this, and, yeah. and, and I'm not a well-traveled person. My travel corridor is usually between Auburn and Destin. I concur. So going 12 hours west <laughs> was, a, was a stretch for me. And, of course, we had a good time, and the things that were going on around us were amazing to me, and I wanted to share with friends and family. So and, I, know, I, I didn't realize that I had made about 50 posts – uh, <laughs> when the weekend was over with, and of course it was almost it was nine seconds away from being the shortest lived victory tour ever. Yeah, it 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 was, and we'll talk more about that game. But it was yeah. a what a storybook finish for the Knicks family. And and, and um, furthermore, on that note, it looked nothing like Legion Field. I kept waiting, <laughs> kept waiting. You said you're me, picking up my pimento cheese. <laughs> you, you never showed. Let me say this: if you get the opportunity, and you may have done it already. To go to Jerry's World out in no, Dallas, and have, man, not. unreal. I mean, there everywhere has a nice stadium. I like all our stadiums, but this is like it's an experience in and of itself. Well, uh, it, I've heard a lot about yeah. inside the stadium, but you were outside the stadium, and it looked like some of the outlying venues would have been cool just to go there, hang out, have some adult I, beverages, and watch the game. I'm going to give you the the real quick version because we are expecting Jeff to call at any point in time. Okay, this is AT and T Stadium. Yeah. This is the Texas Rangers baseball field. Oh, wow. This is going to be the new Texas Rangers baseball field, and they're going to make this a soccer field. When the middle of it. Uh, a what? Yeah. They a are. what kind of field? Soccer. So in the middle of it is a place called Texas Live. Guess who owns that facility? Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones. Okay. <laughs> Here's, this is what was brilliant. Yeah, you know, he didn't, hey, he hey, didn't become a billionaire hey, by being an idiot. This is brilliant. The size of this place, if you took. Four Coleman Coliseums, the basketball gym in Tuscaloosa, mm-hmm. and put those together, that's the kind of space you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple things very cool about it. One, there wasn't a door that you could walk in to be in the facility. They had like a glass wall 80 yards long that would raise up. Wow. So, so you could do I mean, you could herd in there, basically. Wow. And you're going to love this. Two miles in – Within two miles of the stadium, tailgating is not permitted. And there's signs everywhere. So, so he, you, he's forcing you. If you want to tailgate, you're going to Texas Live to tailgate. And you're no, buying his alcohol. Hey, no cover charge to go in. An adult beverage, 16 ounces, $10 bill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's bill. no idiot. Oh, no. And, I, and you can get everything eating-wise from nachos to steak and lobster. What'd you get? Well, ten dollars a pop. Uh, I didn't get much. 
Right. You should have been at Legion yeah. Field. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but get this. After the game, the place that it's three stories. There's balconies. There's the the, the the well, what I would call the great room that had jumbotron after jumbotron after jumbotron showing all the games. They were going to have four bands playing at the same time, and they weren't going to interfere with each other. Kind of like Nighttown back yeah. in the day. Oh, yeah. but, I mean, but, I mean oh, yeah. it, it was amazing. And I'm going to say this: the seating capacity, if I'm correct, at Jerry Jones Stadium was like seventy-two thousand strong. There was probably 60,000 people there. I was shocked how many open seats were in the stadium. But if there were 60,000 in the stadium. You, you, during the game? Yeah. Yeah. Because it didn't look like there were on TV. Yeah, no, no, no. One end zone. The, the, I just lost volume. Me too. Are we good on volume? Are we good? No good, good. Okay, yep. Are we back? I'm not hearing it in my ear. Okay, okay. One end zone was almost empty. The upper ring hey, yeah. all the way around was almost empty. But if there was 60,000 people in the stadium, there was 30,000 in the live, Texas Live. They open at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they stay open until. We got there at 12 o'clock, six hours for kickoff. Wow. It was amazing. It was amazing. Wow. I think we have Jeff calling in. We're going to come back to that. Okay. I think Jeff Allen has called in, and we're going to spend some time with him. Looking forward to this. Jeff, you there? Yes, sir, I am. Jeff Allen, Director of Sports Medicine and Head Football me? Athletic Trainer at the University of Alabama, calling in on War Eagle Roll Tide. Jeff, I know you're a busy man. Thank you so much for spending some time us with, with us here tonight. No, uh, absolutely. Appreciate the opportunity, for sure. We're going to talk in, a, in, in circles here, and Tony and I will kind of go back and forth with questions or whatnot. And, and, and we, we, we prefaced the show talking about you and talking about who you were and what you had done. You invented the tent. The medical tent that pops up on every sideline in the country where when a player gets banged up or, or injured or whatnot, they go in, the trainers and medical staff come in. Aren't I correct in saying you invented that? Yeah, it's kind of crazy to say that you invented a tent. Now, tent <laughs> tents have been around for you know thousands of years, but um, but I, I guess, yeah, I, I did. I came up with the idea and um, just kind of had it in my head and, and talked to um, – Chuck Carr, Dr. Carr, he is the dean of the College of Engineering here in Alabama, and I said, hey, man, can you can you build us something like this? And I, I drew it up on a board in his office, on his whiteboard in his office, and he said, yeah, we can build it, and and that's how it came about. It's crazy how things uh, how things work like that, but uh, that, that's how it happened. Is this something that you were able to put a patent on and you're getting royalties from? You know, we did patent it. Yes, we did. The universe, you know, so... Since it was something that, you know, as a university employee, that I came up with the idea, and it was designed, you know, on on campus through the university. The university patented the idea. I do get some royalties on it, which is obviously nice. The university gets royalties on it first and foremost, but uh, but it's been good. It's been it's been really a neat venture for sure. There's a company, you know, formed now that uh, that makes these things, and um, you know, the university is still involved with that as well, obviously. But it's been a it's been a neat venture, and it's really been neat, you know, for me to to see this as something that now you see really on every sideline, certainly in the NFL and in college football. And you know, their goal now is to to get this out to the high school market and to to make it something that's affordable for them and um, and something that uh, that that high school kids will benefit from as well. And a lot of high schools have them, but that's the big push now is to make it. Uh, uh, something that a lot of high school kids are going to have access to. Well, Jeff, one of the things that, that I hope that you know about this show, and, and we kind of preface it by saying this is the not-so-serious football show for the serious football fan. We have a good time here. We love celebrating the rivalry between Auburn and Alabama. We each get on one side of the line and pull for the team we need to pull for. But one of the things that I especially like about you coming up with the tent is like, you know, for a long time, Alabama has been considered the little brother to Auburn, and the fact that you've been able to get this tent out there, and now we have to pay to have that, I think that levels the playing field just a bit. <laughs> well, they've paid for a lot of things at Auburn. Why not pay for a tent? You notice he hasn't said anything. Yet. <laughs> well, listen, well, Jeff, I, I'm a little jealous of the tent because, like you say, it's everywhere. I mean, you, you you can't turn on a football game on TV and not see that tent, and. It's been David and I, and my dream to be on SEC Shorts, and your tent actually had a cameo in SEC Shorts. W were you able yeah. to see that? I did see that. You know, I, it's funny <laughs> you say that. I I forgot about that. I, I do remember that though. though that was hilarious. It, it's amazing the uh, the attention that this thing's gotten over the years. But uh, 
you know, people always, oh, man, it's so neat that you invented that. I said, man, look, I said, I've been doing this for almost 30 years. I said, I should have thought about this about 25 years ago. Much less, you know, <laughs> You'd be in Saban kind of money now if you'd have done it that yeah. long ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it is it, it is funny to see. I, I give my buddies, I got a lot of good friends down at Auburn on their medical staff. And I, I said, man, it's so nice to see y'all using something that was invented at the University of Alabama. We appreciate it. <laughs> you give them a big roll tide every time. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and by the way, going back that to that SEC short, Jeff, I did concur with the diagnosis of amputation <laughs> I concur. to his leg. <laughs> Oh, what, wasn't that just? That was so good. That was so good. We we had yeah, we had those guys on last week, and and I don't. I, yeah. I'm assuming you've probably met Josh and Robert. If you hadn't, uh, and you get an opportunity to meet those guys, oh my gosh, they're hilarious. It, it would it would it would be worth your time to meet them, certainly. Well, I tell you what. Now that y'all reminded me of that of that show of that episode on that particular one about the ten, I'm gonna have to go back and pull that up tonight because that was that was a great. Was great. They're all great. They're Those great. guys are phenomenal. Yeah, it it was do. great. It was great. Well, speaking yeah. of Tua, you've yeah. you you got a trip to New York City last year and and to the Heisman. Uh, and how was that experience? You know, it's funny that you say that. We were talking. I was talking about that today. I was joking with Tua just about that today. I'm like. Uh, I like, buddy. I hope you get an opportunity to go back there. I said I'd love to go with you, but I hope I don't have to this year. <laughs> you know? yeah, you, you, it was a bu- it was a business trip for you. I understand it was. We were, yeah. you know, obviously we 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 were very, um, you know, we were stayed real productive with what we did on the trip. You know, we went. I went with a purpose, and that purpose was obviously to make sure that we took advantage of, you know, every second that we could to treat him because we knew we were short on time to kind of turn him around and get him ready for the Orange Bowl. But um, but you know, on a on the opposite note of that, it was an unbelievable experience for me. And obviously someone that's, um, that's worked in college football for a long time, but more than that, someone that's just a fan of college football to be in that environment and to, you know, to meet some of those folks and to just be there that night. I mean, it's just incredibly special to say the least, you know, it, it's kind of, kind of overwhelming really. Cause it's such a, it's such a historic event and such a neat deal. And, you know, I, I tell people, being there and watching, you know, all those finalists, those three guys that were finalists, all of which are incredible athletes, and watching them interact and watching their families interact, it was really neat. It was a special trip for sure. I bet. Jeff, let me ask you this. How long have you been the head trainer there at the university, and how long has the tent been around? So I came here. Actually, I came the year Coach Saban came here. So I've been here for 13 years now. I got here. In uh, June of 2007 is when I started at Alabama. So I've been here for all 13 seasons with Coach Saban, which has been phenomenal. And you know, the tent, I, I want to say, let's see, what year? 2015, was that the year we played Clemson out in uh, Arizona? That was the first year that we used the tent. So it's been since 2015. So this is, I guess, the fourth year of it. All right, well, let me ask a follow-up question. You said that you, came with, year, said you came with yeah, Saban, you came with Saban 13 years ago. When are you all leaving? <laughs> well i hope i'm not leaving anytime soon i don't think Me he too, is Jeff. leaving anytime soon um but you know i, I just <laughs> that's a great question but um they'll have to drag me away from this place i don't want to go at all i love it here we actually we love living here my daughter's in school here now so it's a phenomenal place my wife works on campus so we love it we love being a part of this university and this town and it's been great but you know, to speak about coach, you know, you, you can just tell that he loves doing what he does. And, uh, you know, I think when you love doing something, you know, it's not work. And it's so obvious watching him interact with the players. And, you know, I don't think people sometimes see that part of him. They, there's a perception out there about him. But the reality of it is he's a guy that genuinely cares about his players, that wants them to be successful. Obviously, he wants to win. No doubt we all do. But, but deeper than that, this is a guy that, that really, really cares about his players. And, and you see it. You see guys that played for him, you know, in the past here at Alabama, but also guys that played for him at LSU that, that come and visit him here. You know, and our, our guys, clearly, they come back all the time to see, you know, to be here and go to games and come back and see him. And that's when you know how much of an impact a coach has. You know, um, it, it's just been phenomenal. You know, a lot of times there, there's so many moving parts, you know, within a, a program and certainly during a game that the average fan doesn't get to see or aware of. And, and a part of that is sometimes uh, bumps and bruises and injuries. And you guys literally 
you know, work around the clock, whether it's rehab, whether it's, you know, trying to, to get them back or diagnose or whatnot. You had a devastating injury just a couple of weeks ago uh, with Dylan Moses. And I know you, I'm not asking you to speak specifically to his injury or, or what his uh, outlook may be, but you guys are there. And, and to see them put in the work they do and, and then they, they fall to injury or what, or what it might, whatever it is, that's got to be tough. I mean, and to have you guys there as a support system and know that they're going to get back to normal, it may take a little longer than they want, but you guys are going to get them back and, and, and their health is y'all's first and foremost concern. That's got to be reassuring to not only he, but the family members as well. Well, I, I certainly hope it is. And that's our goal. And I tell my staff all the time that, you know, we, we, we have to form relationships with these players, you know, right when they get here before they're injured so that, you know, if they do suffer an injury, we're going to have that trust relationship with them and with their family. So it's something that we put a lot of effort into in, in terms of forming good relationships with all the players, you know, right off the bat, right when they come in as freshmen. And, you know, hopefully I tell players all the time, I'm like, look, hopefully, you know, we never have to take, you know, do anything crazy with you or do anything, you know, major with you health wise. But, you know, I, I always tell them when they get here, I, if we do, though, I want you to know that we're going to bust our tails to, to take care of you the right way and get you back. And, you know, we're so fortunate in Alabama to have a, such a good support network around us with great team positions and a great administration that wants their players taken care of, and it makes our job a lot easier. But uh, that those relationships are something that we put a lot of uh, emphasis on forming them and making sure that the players trust us and we have that relationship with them. Talk a little bit, if you will, to to how far medicine and and rehab techniques have come. You know, back when when we were in high school, uh, training was pretty much avil and ice. Maybe a little bit of tape yeah. there, but of course, there's so much more to it now. Whether you're working in a, a resistance pool or, and I certainly don't yeah. claim to know all the different things you guys do to get them back, but it is crazy the different things that y'all are able to do uh, to get these guys back as soon as possible. No, I think the technology, it's, it's crazy how much, you're right, it, it is crazy how much it has changed. And I would tell you that Advil and ICE are still a common component <laughs> of our treatment flow program. But, but man, it, there, is, there are so many things out there that now we have access to that, uh, you know, just, just medicine in general. Clearly, it's changing every single year in every area and certainly in sports medicine and in athletic training and, you know, what we're able to do with athletes. Uh, and, and, you know, having great team physicians like we do both here locally and also in Birmingham with the Andrews Sports Medicine Clinic, you know, those guys are, I tell people all the time, I'm like, Dr. Andrews and, and Dr. Kane, they're like the Nick Saban of orthopedic surgery. They're at the top of their game. And, you know, when you're dealing with those type guys, you know that you're going to be getting cutting edge treatment and cutting edge uh, medicine and surgery and it really makes a difference. And, and, and the other thing is just, again, being at a place like Alabama where the support of the administration, you know, in every way and certainly financially is, is second to none in terms of uh, how we're able to care for our players. You know, we, um, we spend an absolute ton of money on them medically, and, um, and, and it's the right thing to do, you know, to, to, to take care of them because of what they're doing out there every day and to make sure that we're doing the right thing for them. You know, one of the big talking points in, in football now, not only in college but in high school and in NFL for certain, is a concussion protocol, head injury. Is that something that goes to you guys, or is there a, a specialist that, that deals with that when a player falls into protocol? Yeah, so uh, it is something that we deal with. You know, we, we clearly have um, a, our main team physician that will manage every concussion, and, and then we also have a, a neurosurgeon and a neurologist that will also be involved in their care. So that has changed tremendously over the years for the better, for sure. I think um, that, you know, now the way that it's being done at all levels of football, I think is obviously the, um, the, the best that it's ever been done. Um, you know, because, and, and everybody has been reactive to the research. I, I tell people all the time, there's a difference between, you know, reacting and overreacting, you know, and I think that, the NFL has, has done a really, really good job of, of dealing with that injury. And that has, you know, bled down to the college level and to the high school level, you know, to make sure that we are managing that injury correctly. We're not returning them too soon. We're diagnosing them promptly and, and making sure that we're making the right decisions. And the other thing is I think players are so much more educated on concussions now that they're a lot more vocal about them than they used to be in the past. Whereas in the past, you may get a, 
an athlete that has a concussion, they don't say anything about it, and you don't know. Uh, you know, if, if it's a mild one, you may not realize it. But athletes now are a lot more in tune to that injury, and that's making it better for sure. Well, I want to ask you a little bit about Scott Cochran. As we're doing this, we're going out on several platforms of social media and people type in questions and your picture's up also. So it, we're talking to Jeff Allen, and for those of you who see the picture, you know who that is. You've seen him. You've, you, you're kind of famous whether you know it or not. They may not know your name, Jeff, but they know your face from, from Saturdays. But <clears throat> speaking of Scott Cochran, um, a little bit on the front end before the injuries, before you get to it, that guy has to get him in shape. Um, how would you assess Alabama's workout regimen and, and the and the regimen he puts on? It's been ballyhooed. It's been on a lot of talk shows, and, and he's been featured on a lot of things. But, um, and people say there's a correlation between conditioning and strength conditioning and, and injuries. Uh, what, what's your take on that and, and and his performance at Alabama? And, well, you know. I- it is to me that relationship uh, between the, the strength coach and the athletic trainer is probably one of the more underrated um, relationships in a program. Okay, I don't think people realize how critical it is for those two people to get along. And, you know, Scott and I have been here with Coach Saban all 13 years. We've worked together longer than any other strength coach and uh, athletic trainer, certainly in the SEC and probably very few in the country that have worked uh, together longer than we have. So, you know, we, we get along great. I mean, I talk to Scott sometimes in football season more than I talk to my wife um, because, you know, it's just critical for us to be on the same page with, with how we're managing our athletes, you know, in terms of what he's doing with them in the weight room, what we need to do with them medically. But, you know, Scott is phenomenal at what he does. Everybody sees Scott and they see, you know, the motivational part of him. They see him jumping up and down and yelling and screaming on the sideline. And he's so good with our players in that regard. He's unbelievable in terms of the motivational part. But at the end of the day, he is a great strength coach. And I tell players all the time, if they'll just buy into what he's saying, buy into what he's doing, he knows how to get players ready to play SEC football. And I, I see him do it. He's very deliberate with what he does with them starting, you know, in January, you know, after the season, we'll usually take, you know, two or three weeks off after the season. And then the process starts in late January. And that extends all the way till, till August in terms of what we're doing with them. And this very deliberate, it's again, very organized and very regimented. Uh, the word that comes to my mind, uh, you know, in terms of describing what he does is intense. Um, but these players, and it's true at every school, what, what they do to prepare to play this game is, is unbelievable. That's the part people don't see. They see, you know, 12 regular season games a year, but that, that pales in comparison to the amount of work they have to put in to get ready for those 12. Well, Jeff, I'm going to need a list of everybody who came when you and Saban came. And uh, there's going to be a job open at Southern Cal, I think, in the very near future. <laughs> And I'd like to invite y'all to go out there and get that place turned around. You've done some good work here. We've certainly enjoyed having you here in the Deep South. I think your work's done. And uh, as soon as we can get that Southern Cal job open, why don't you guys head out there and plant your flag out there for a while? I, I don't think any of us are California boys. So I don't. Great answer. Great answer, Jeff. We're, we're kind of we're, we've kind of become ingrained here in Alabama. We like Alabama. All of us do. Um, you know, it's been it's been a great place to live, and uh, and, and you know, just, uh, to speak to your point there a little bit, I, I love the the rivalry. I love the you know the Auburn Alabama. That's so special to be a part of that Iron Bowl. You know, every year that's something that everybody in college football, you know, watches. And you know, even I grew up in Georgia, so I you know I wasn't an Alabama fan. I wasn't an Auburn fan, but you know, I grew up watching that game every year, like everybody did. And, uh, to be a part of that and to, it's unbelievable. I, I think though people misinterpret that rivalry on the inside of it, because there is a tremendous amount of respect, um, when those two teams play with, with each team. And I see it with our players. I see it, how they interact. And I was amazed by that, you know, the very first year that we played, which uh, obviously 2007 and, and played down there at Auburn. And I was like, okay, this is going to be a, you know, a, uh, who knows what this was game's going to be like, but just the the way the players enter, they played hard and they wanted to win, and they always do on both teams. It's amazing, but after the game, just the the respect that both teams have for each other really um, always um, does my heart good to see that. And I, I think the same thing's true with the coaches and the administration too. It's a pretty impressive rivalry. I want to ask a, a kind of off the wall question, and, and maybe you'll have the answer. Oh, to that this. that wasn't an off the wall question. <laughs> no, just, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> only on game day. 
how many guys make up your staff in terms of taping ankles, taping wrist, whatever, getting the how many players do you see? How many staff members does it take to service that? And how many cases of tape do you go through for one game? That's a great question. We well we have to speak to our staff, you know, we have seven certified athletic trainers that, that work specifically with football. I mean that's all that there there's seven of us and that is our, our full time job is strictly with football. You know, we have a total of twenty five certified athletic trainers that cover all the sports at Alabama, wow. but seven of us, you know, specifically with football. You know, we're, we're fortunate here that uh, Alabama has a degree in athletic training. So the students in that program, they do clinical rotations through all of our sports. So in addition to those seven folks, you know, we'll have about 15 athletic training students that will be working football, you know, each fall. Um, so th- there's a lot of folks out there that, that go into every practice and every game day. And, you know, with game day, we'll have a variety of team positions out there. Just about every specialty you can think of it will be on that field. I think the only thing that we don't have on the field on a game day is an OBGYN position. But other than that, <laughs> I tell it's funny. I tell people every year, I, 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 joke about, I joke about it with my buddies down at Auburn. I'm like, the day of the Iron Bowl, I pity the people in the state of Alabama that have to get some type of medical care. Because <laughs> yeah. Every position in the state is on one or the other sideline. Yeah. So, but but we have paramedics that are with us. I mean, it takes a you know we we just want to cover every base that we can on a game day. And uh, I think you know people when they think about what what we do as athletic trainers, they think, oh, okay, there's a the guy that's making the Gatorade or taping the ankles. And certainly that is a huge part of our job, but. You know, the other part of our job is, you know, taking care of those kids between every series, you know, um, you know, doing watching out for injuries, taking care of injuries when they occur. I mean, we have a radiologist on the sideline with us to take care of x-rays if we need x-rays during the game. You know, can y'all do that in the stadium, Jeff? Do y'all, do y'all, do we have can. To... Yeah. yeah wow. No, we, we, have, we have a full x-ray capability in, in Bryant Denny during, during each game, which is great. Um, we have an MRI tech that's on call for us. We can't do that in the stadium, but we will go to a local facility and do an MRI during a game if we have to. So, man, that's pretty standard across the league. You know, everybody does it, you know, has access to those type things. But it, it, it's a whole lot more that goes into it medically than people realize. But it's, you know, you just want to do everything you can to make sure that, um, that you're protecting those kids. Now, well, speaking of pity, do y'all draw straws? To see who gets to go in and deliver bad news to Coach Shaden about injuries. <laughs> well, that 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 is my job. Oh, I, bless your heart! I'm the one that gets that role right there. Um, so you know, every I, shoot, I meet with him every day at ten thirty, like like clockwork, every day to go over the injury report each day. Is his schedule really is is his schedule really that regimented? I mean, is he he you know you, you hear stories. It, it, it really is. I mean, he is. Uh, I've learned. I've learned so much from him in terms of like um, being efficient and being organized. And you know, he just he doesn't waste time. You know, people say what upsets him. I'm like, you know, I mean, you, you see him on people see him on TV and they think that he gets mad about everything. He really doesn't. It's not his style. But one thing if, that will upset him is wasting time. He does yeah. not like to do that. He likes to be efficient in what he does, and he's incredibly productive and gets things done. But um, but yeah, I am the one that gets to deliver that news. That's obviously part of my job as the, as the head athletic trainer. And uh, you know, he's great though. He is. Yeah. You know, as long as people say, "What's it like?" I said, "As long as you have a plan." You know, if I go in there and say, "This is what this guy's got, and this is what we're going to do," then he's good. You know. Yeah. But I would, I, you know, you don't want to go in there without a plan. Just like right. if you're the defensive coordinator or the offensive coordinator. You know, he says, well, what are we going to do this week? Well, I don't really know. We'll think, you know, these guys, you know, you can't do that with him. You got to say, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. And, you know, he just wants to be kept informed and he wants to know, you know, he does not interfere with what we're doing medically. He's great like that. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like I have a great relationship with him. I, at least I think I do. I've been with him for 13 years. So hopefully you trust me by now, but uh, he, he's great to work with. Well, I'm sure he does it, and it doesn't matter what he does, what he would have chosen to be his profession in life. You would know he would be uh, at the top of his game, whatever, whether it's a CEO or a football coach or owner of a franchisee somewhere. I mean, you, you just that's the way he's geared, and and I'm thankful that he and you have come to the University of Alabama. So thank you for well, that. Well, thank you for your well, time. Been an honor to be here. I appreciate y'all's time for sure. Thank you. Well, I want to wish you well at USC. 
Um, we're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> but also, I, I want to say this before before we let you go, Jeff, and I want you to understand, I have very little formal medical training. So I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm going to add this. I think it'd be a great idea after about week week six to shut Judy and Tua down. <laughs> let, them, let them get some good tape out there, get a body of work for the NFL scouts, and let's get those guys ready for the combine. No bumps, well, no I, bruises. I, I, Run that I by the big guy and see what he thinks. We can probably negotiate something like that, but there's probably a few guys down there on the planes that will want to shut down as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, Jeff, we really appreciate you taking some time to, to spend with us. That was mighty kind of you. Uh, maybe later in the year we might get you to come back on and kind of give us an up-to-date on, on what's going on in, in, in Tuscaloosa if you could. But you were mighty nice to come on and spend some time with us, and we really appreciate it. You know, I'm honored to do it. I appreciate it. My wife just walked in the room and she heard you saying something about us going to USC, and she gave me a look like. <laughs> so, I have to get I have to get off this phone and tell her that we are not going to Southern Cal. Yeah, so. no, it, it that's what I heard, Jeff. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. <laughs> it's gonna be all over Facebook tonight. That, oh, thank you, Jeff. Roll Tide, Jeff. <laughs> thank you, guys. Roll Tide. All right, on the phone with us, Jeff Allen. What a great, great interview that was, and, and a great trainer he is, and. His picture's up there, so Bama fans know who he is. Invented the tent. Invented the tent. Awesome. That, 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 that's good stuff. Yeah, that's You really know, you good. think about the guy at Florida back in, what, the 60s, did yeah. the Gatorade, yeah. and then Jeff Allen comes up with the tent, shaping the world, man. So, and it's such, I mean, I don't want to negate anything he'd done, but like he said, it was such a simple idea. Why hadn't it been thought of before yeah. now? You know, it, and it's easy for their efforts to be overlooked by the casual fan. Yeah. There's nothing intentional. You see the X's and O's. You see the guy running, the guy catching, the guy tackling. But it's those guys. He mentioned Scott Cochran, you know, with the with the training program and, yeah. and the, the year-round nutrition that goes along with it, him and his staff, getting those guys, you know, put back together and, and healed up. Without those efforts, the wins on Saturday never take place. Saban would take it out. I mean, I had so many more questions I could have yeah. asked and could have kept him here forever, but I wanted yeah. him to get back. To training for the, get those boys in shape for Saturday and the Saturdays to come. But you know, so Jeff Allen, great interview. Thank you, Jeff. I was going to ask him how many ammonia salts he used last Saturday. <laughs> I, don't know. I was shocked how physical Duke was. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I you, was shocked. I'm sure that I mean, shocked knocked you. y'all off the ball early. Knocked you off the ball. Did you? You didn't see it that way. Um, I tell you what, I saw. I saw our offensive line struggle. And I saw an uncharacteristic-looking Alabama football team. Can I say something about you getting extremely mad? Well, I doubt it. I, I wasn't impressed. I wasn't either. I wasn't. I, I'll be, be honest, I wasn't. You can, you can take the final score and you can stick it. I well, wasn't impressed. Well, but I don't know that you could tell much about Alabama after that game. I really don't. I don't know that you could tell much about Auburn after that game because I don't know what, what to make of Oregon, hey, to be honest I, with you. I agree. They looked undersized. Let me, let me tell you this, and, 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 and I'm going to cut into Auburn a little bit. I'm a fair guy. And I don't know if the talking heads talked about it on Saturday or not. I was livid in Dallas, Texas last weekend. And why? The football team shows up in Dallas at midnight. They get their hotel rooms one one thirty the morning of the game. Had a chartered flight out of Montgomery. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on a soapbox here for a minute. Had a chartered flight out of Montgomery Friday at got, midnight. No, got delayed four hours. They did walkthroughs at time. the airport. Yeah, I want to check through the control. At Danley Field. Hey, yes, hey, hey, Montgomery hey, International. Here's my whatever thing, it is. Here's now. my thing. This was not rogue weather that blew in. You what, know on, what delayed them? Weather. Rain, couldn't fly out, couldn't fly out, couldn't fly into Dallas. My thing is this, is on Monday, start checking the weather reports, man. And if you got to leave on Tuesday to be there in time for the game, do it. Do you know how weather works? A little bit. Okay. Well, maybe we need to get Spinks Megginson to be one of our guests. I, I'm just telling you. there's not Pop-up thunderstorms, you can't each, predict each seven team, days out. Each team was scheduled to have a walkthrough in AT&T Stadium. Mm-hmm. Auburn didn't get theirs. The first time Auburn went in the field was two hours for the game. Obama's well, former but, offensive line but, coach is now the head coach but, of Oregon. But I'm, but I'm got this team to there. Say this, and, and I don't, I don't know. I know it. Could, we're, Auburn's one of the few teams in the country that shows up on game day at one o'clock in the morning. They just are. So is, that, is that is that a it's common occurrence with Auburn? Or is this one time deal? I'm just. I, you would hope it's a one time deal when you talk about it. So you team. beat Auburn to Dallas. I beat Auburn to Dallas, and I drove. It took you an hour and a half to get from Bruton to Flompton, and you beat. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I beat Auburn. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, 
But I mean that to me that's just to me that is not setting your team up for success. Because listen to this, and this is some things that I don't think everybody gives consideration to. I don't know the science behind it. I just know there's Why a science. Why couldn't they have flown out Thursday night? Because they don't have classes right. on Friday. Well, here, Catch me outside. How about that? Here's my thing. Okay, you kick off at 6.30 on Saturday night. And I don't know the answer to this question. Trent Davidson, I saw, I saw him in. He might know this. All right. Let's say lights out at 10.30, 11 o'clock. That's probably standard for a Saturday night game. You're going to be in your room Friday at 10.30, 11 o'clock, lights out. Whether you're technically asleep or not, I'm assuming there's bed check to make sure you're there. Yep. Okay. Do you wake up and eat a breakfast and then have a lunch later? Or do you sleep in and have a big brunch? I don't know how many meals you take in. I don't know how many. I think you try to maintain a normal schedule. That's what I'm saying. I know when you get there at 1.30 in the morning, your schedule's off. If you have breakfast at 8.30, then you're getting five and a half hours of sleep. I think you're getting overworked up. I'm not. You, you, I'm not. You're I'm not. not. You're not. Uh, you're no. not. And you never have been I'm an 18-year-old prime yeah. Let me tell you something. 1% athlete. You're a 72-year-old man who eats nothing but meat. Let me ask you this. Why does every team in the country have an itinerary? You tell me that. Well, to keep them on schedule. Okay. Then why have a schedule if you're not going to stay on it? Getting there at 1.30 in the morning on game day is not acceptable. Mother, it's not acceptable. It but, doesn't but, matter. But Mother it Nature cannot matter. be predicted. On, on, they knew bad weather was coming on Monday Leave on Tuesday. This three days of school. Who when, cares? When we got to beat Oregon. You drove the Taurus. When did you start checking for bad I weather? I never drove in rain. I never. I, the first raindrop never hit. It's a fusion, by the way. It's a Ford fusion. Fusion. And sorry. not one raindrop hit it. Okay. I'm just. I just. I'm just saying, to get there at one thirty in the morning, is unacceptable. Are you trying to say that's the reason Auburn? I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that's unacceptable. No, you are because every time you say something, you're saying something. That well. So you you don't you don't think that's a big deal? You don't think a young man getting in his bed at one thirty before a game that that night is not a big deal? Now how come? How come? So do you think when they play people? home games, they're staying at the at the at the Motel Eight? In, no, I can tell they do. They drive to Montgomery and in stay, Lynette. They, no, they drive to no, Montgomery. No, they stay in Lynette and they stay at the Renaissance. They stay in Lynette. They stay at the Renaissance. They used to stay and in there's, Lynette. There's bed check and there's curfews I for a reason. They stay in Lynette. I they walk they through the hotel lobby at twelve thirty a.m. 18 hours for kickoff. If you were an 18-year-old kid in the prime of your life, the body of an Adonis, and you were in Montgomery. <laughs> what? What? You mean to tell me after bed check, you're not, you're not, you're not putting the old, the old te- bed rope out the window I, and climbing down I'm and going to you that I could get uh, away with it. Twin Peaks or Hooters? I'm or just telling you that's that. Arity's Angels. That's not the way to travel. <laughs> That's not Come the way on, to travel. Man. That is, uh, I'm not, yeah. I'm not. If you're trying to say that's why Auburn looked bad, you're No, wrong. I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm not saying that. Right. I'm not making it. We won the ball game. We had the, we had the best win right now. We had the best body of work of any team in the country right now. I it's, can't argue with that. Right that's going to change gonna in 48 change. hours. Yeah, it is. And, and I'm going to be fair, and I'm going to release the poll here in a minute, oh, and it'll, it'll, it'll show that, and it'll be, it's a fluid situation. I'm just saying there's not too many teams in the country that would have made the choice to show up at 1.30 in the morning. And, it, and, and phone and it, calls and it, and it, and it, 251-260-2800 and it could have been avoided if you want to 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 weigh in on dj's rant of itinerary and well, i don't know I'm to but i'm gonna throw this out there i'm with you i don't know how good oregon is i don't know uh i thought that auburn did some things that leads me to believe we might be okay got a lot of work to do but i do know this Bo Nix has a lot of it that you hear people talk about all the time. He's got to get better. We got to be better around him. But he's got something to him. Here's what I saw. Honestly, here's what I saw. Physically, he's 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 not an average freshman. No. Nope. Even when he was scrambling, it didn't look great. Uh, Oregon's a fast team. They're built for speed. They don't have a lot of size. You can see that. The defensive ends were 245, 55 pounds, way undersized for what you would see in the SEC. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're predicated on speed. I thought he did a pretty good job handling that. I thought Auburn's offensive line, just like Bama's offensive line, looked horrible. I, 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 I agree. Um, I agree. And, and that was some of Bo Nick's problem. Uh, but I think once he gets the speed of the game, and I mean – not physical speed, but the decision making speed down. He's going to be really good, and I've told you that before. And I think I said it in 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 one of the previous shows. Is he's going to be really good, and he could be 
Auburn's next Heisman winner if they get some receivers in there to help him out. I, I was encouraged overall with what I saw and what I left there with. It was a win. It was a game that certainly could have gone the other way, and I do think it's easier to correct mistakes coming off a win. You think about the uh, the ride home for Oregon. I mean, they, they were probably kicking themselves, thinking, hey, we just let one get away, and I think that's a, a valid feeling to have because yeah. it, it was there to win for them as well. There's no question. Well, the, the, the what's the, the kid's name? Williamson kid that caught the ball? Williams. Yep, Williams. Yeah, it was underthrown ball. He made a great play coming mm-hmm. back on it, and just his size. That's where that's the difference in SEC and Pac twelve. Yeah, that that DB was you know he, well, he may have been five ten maybe. Williams is what six six three six three two fifteen. So he bodied him out. Imagine that on a, on a basketball court. What, what's that going to do to a five ten one hundred and eighty pound guy? No, you don't got you don't have a prayer of a rebound, and that's essentially what it was. And just but that's the difference in SEC and Pac twelve. You know, I heard some of the people around the stadium. And they were being, I thought, unfairly critical of Auburn's defense. What, now I was Auburn fans. Yeah. Okay. And I and I was taken mm-hmm. aback with the first two drives for for touchdowns. I was, but after that, and of course, when you factor in the sleep deprivation, after that, <laughs> Auburn's defense put it on lockdown. They completely changed the game. The offense got the credit for making the play there at the end. The defense changed the game. I think uh, after the first quarter, I think that Oregon had two first downs. And I think they had, like, uh, you, I think they had seven three and outs. You you sent me the stats or, or something with posts I saw. Maybe you sent them or something, whatever it was, and for second half stats. And quite frankly, I watched the game and I was shocked at the, at the defensive stats because I I would have lost my house betting that the Auburn's defense didn't play that well in the second half because it didn't look like yeah. and it didn't feel like it during the game. It did. I guess it, because they were trying to mount a comeback yeah, offensively. Yeah. And it didn't. Yeah, they shut it down. I mean, I think they had 13 yards on 13 carries. Yeah. Oregon did. I, uh, it, it was nothing there. Uh, and the, they just hunt. They kept us in until the offense made a couple of plays. And they didn't make many. But, I mean, it was not a, a, a pretty game execution-wise, by any stretch of the imagination, to hang in there and get the win against what's probably a – Decent team, at least. I certainly don't think they're top five, top ten necessarily. I think they play in a very weak conference. But we talked about this last week. You know, the Pac-12, excuse me, yeah, the, the Pac-12's done. They won't have a playoff representative. They're done. Yeah, we talked Oregon, about that. Oregon had to get that win to have a chance, mm-hmm. run the table, and then see who else does yeah. or doesn't. They're done. Their conference is done. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't think that. That, that they're that good, um, and that's really that's not a knock on Auburn. I just don't think Auburn played that well. I, I really don't. I think that Auburn has a lot better days ahead of them, um, and I'm saying that begr- begrudgingly, but I do. I've got to be honest. Uh, and and yeah, they they just after four quarters and Auburn leaning on it, it wore them down. Can I and, you know, and and I sense I don't know this. I haven't been able to read many of the comments, but I sense that there might be some agitation. From some of the viewers towards me, or some of the things I might have said today, uh, and that's fine. But I'm going to say another one that might be a hot button issue. And you and I talked about it a little bit, and, and it, I find it offensive. This really bothers me. This bothers me, and it's probably going to bother what me more. Doesn't little, bother you? With it, I'm just, you know, I don't know if it's me getting a little bit older, and I'm a little more touchy or whatnot. But I'm not going to stand for it. First of all, I'm offended about the chicken sandwiches. But, <laughs> that has pissed me off. <laughs> I am offended at all these bammers that came in on Sunday talking about jailing this, jailing that. Look, he quit. He was disrespected. He was misled, possibly lied to. I'm not ready to make that assertion yet. No, but you're getting close. In week three or four, I probably... (laughs) But Oh, we love Jalen. I hope he does. Give me a break, man. Your quarterback's Tua. You better hope you don't face Jalen Hurts. I said here on this show two weeks ago he's going to win the Heisman Trophy. I said that. I said he'd be the best running back in the Big 12, and he is. Ran for 150-plus, threw for 330-plus, first time in conference history. So you, you, you ride with the guy who brought you. You got Tua. Jalen belongs to Oklahoma. Uh, well, I wanted to get it out Do there, you think man. I didn't know that? Want to get it out I, I'm, I want you to get it out because I don't know how many times I want to hear that you well, pick Jalen for the Heisman. If I get another te- if I get another text of Clemson scored and I pick Jalen for the Heisman, I'm going to have a, a stroke. I wish well, that Ford Pinto would have broke okay. down on you out there in Dallas and you never would have made it home. Come on, man. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I enjoy your humor. 
and I know that a lot of your posts on this War Eagle Roll Tide page is to push my buttons. <laughs> quietly, it works sometimes. Not a lot of them. But I can tell you this. All of them. When you posted, little two is great handoff for the first touchdown. I mean, I tell you, he turned around and handed the ball to You could have done I that. I know you and you Steve. I know you and Man, Steve you never celebrated anything <laughs> remotely athletic on a field of achievement. I thought it was. Because you were on the bench when yeah. Steve single-handedly won state that, championship with T.R. Miller. <laughs> Oh, you might have been playing cut ball. That's a joke. But did you see that handoff? First play, first college play, touchdown. I thought it was awesome <laughs> that he and his brother got to celebrate. I mean, y'all are Auburn. You're always talking about family. Let them celebrate. Let them have a. It was just a little much. Let them have the thing. He didn't deserve a post. Yeah, you jealous. He didn't deserve a post. You're jealous. <laughs> okay, so the number is 251 260 8600. If you want to call and take DJ to task. Top five. Once again, oh, Lord. let me get it out. I'm a fair guy. There's a method to the madness. It's a fluid situation. Nobody's given anything here. I don't care who you signed back in February. It has nothing to do with what you've done here. Okay? Top five. Clemson was a mythical exhibition champions from last year. So they're going to stay at one. They did nothing to lose that spot. They're going to stay one. We've got to come back and talk about this. Okay. Go ahead. Finish it up. UCF is the two-time defending regular season mythical national champion. Until somebody takes them down in the regular season, that's where they're going to stay. UCF number two. And it won't be this week because they're playing FAU. Hey, number three. And I said I was going to do this last week for either team. Auburn has the best win in the country to date. It won't last past this weekend. There's two games this weekend that either of those four teams wins those two games. That's going to be a better win, in my opinion. But right now, Auburn, with their body of work, is number three. Oklahoma, who has the best quarterback in the country, Jalen Hurts, and he belongs to Oklahoma, by the way. They're number four. (sighs) And I like the win last week in conference. 1-0 One and zero in the SEC, the best conference in the country. Georgia Bulldogs number five. Now, before I leave that, there are other teams that I am watching. I think LSU and Texas. Whoever wins that game is going to be number three next week. That'll be the best win in the country, in my opinion. Either for either team, I think both those teams are better than Oregon. I think uh, Ohio State and Michigan are two teams to continue to watch. They got to play somebody. Got to play somebody, get that body of work. I'm going to watch them. Texas A&M could have the biggest win of the year if they get it done Saturday. I don't know that they will, but when you're playing Clemson, that's a lot of opportunity. I think that Texas A&M does have the luxury of having the best coach in the country. I don't think that's much of a debate. Jimbo Fisher's the best coach in the country. And I'm looking forward to watching that game and how his team competes. And there's a couple other teams to watch. Time out. Rewind tape. I'm a fair guy. Who would you say was the best coach? Jimbo man? Fisher. He can coach him up. I didn't say he had the best trainer. I say he's the best coach. Goodness gracious. That Pinto must have been leaking. But it'll be a fluid situation. Auburn's not going to be number three next week, and that's outside their control. Well, there are three teams on your top five that would, you know, Clemson obviously needs to be number one. Oklahoma, I think, needs to be in the mix in the top five, and I think Georgia should be. Okay. I don't know that Alabama played like a number two team in the country. I don't know if they played like a top five team in the country. But luckily, championship's not decided in week one. There is one thing that we both hit on last week. We both suggested that there are we don't condone gambling. Mm-hmm. We're not promoting it. But there mm-hmm. are people out there who make predictions on what a team might be another might beat another team by. We do it for entertainment purposes entertainment purposes only. only. There were a group of people who thought that Auburn would beat Oregon by four. And you liked that pick last that week. That was my pick last week. So you won that one. How did I do? You were one and oh. Okay. There was also a group that same group of people, you covered late, but a cover's a cover. A cover's a cover. That same group of people thought Georgia would beat Vanderbilt by twenty two and a half points. That was my pick. Georgia won by 24, held on late to cover. So you and I are both, and we're going to keep a running total on this, so you and I are both 1-0. and 0 We're tied. Here on the early, just into the season. 
Ken, Ken, please write that down. I've got he will, it right here. He will change that somehow. It will get. It'll get re. Don't mind that liquid paper. It means nothing. <laughs> what a. So who is your pick this week? I'm going with, again with the marquee. What I consider to be the marquee matchup. Okay. Of the weekend. And that's Texas A and M and Clemson. Number okay. twelve, Texas A and M. I want to know at number one, Clemson, two thirty at Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. When I first saw this game, it's going to be on ABC, by the way. Um, when I first saw this game, saw the spread, my gut said it was way too big. But after, you know, some consideration and some homework. Uh, you know, from the boys out in Vegas. Well, when did you start doing homework? <laughs> <laughs> when money's on the line. Um, I think that spread may actually be a little low. You're taking Clemson? I'm taking Clemson in 17 and a half. Mine is, wow. Mine is 17 and a half. You mean to, you mean to tell me. Yes. That you think Jimbo, a Jimbo Fisher coach football team is going to get, get beat that bad on national TV? Did you watch Jimbo they, Fisher and they did everything. But, Saban. They did everything but beat them last year. Yeah, but and where were they playing last year? They were playing at College Station. And who was a true freshman last year? Kellen Mond. Which I thought was a true. Was I thought was a Trevor Lawrence freshman. was too. But. Okay, I mean that's your pick. So if you're playing backyard ball and you got Kellen Mond and Trevor Lawrence, who are you taking? I would probably take Trevor Lawrence, but I think Kellen Mond's a really good quarterback. If you're playing backyard ball and you have to pick a defense between. Clemson, Texas A&M, which one are you taking? I would probably choose Clemson's players. If you're playing backyard ball and you have to take a running back between Texas A&M and Clemson, who are you taking? I would probably choose Etienne at Clemson. But I would take Jimbo over Debo 24-7. No, no. <laughs> then you would get your tail. No, no. Jimbo, Fisher, Jimbo Fisher, best coach in the country. If you he, got that program heading the right. Have you seen them recruiting this year? A and well, Time out. You just I said. Hey, you just I said did. five minutes ago. I, I did. You don't care who they recruit in February in terms of rankings. I, it, it has nothing to do with a ranking. He has the program going. Is the right, ranking just, not? Is ranking not based on talent? No. Based on so not, that's, not my that's a beauty pageant. This, no, this is performance. That's beauty. No, pageant. this is performance. It's a beauty pageant. This is performance. That girl might be a great cook. No, it's performance. She may be big Look. and warm and cuddly, but because she's not a stick <laughs> figure, she's I'm, not going to win that crown. I'm a fair guy. She, that but girl may be a five-tool player. Man, I got you down. You got Clemson minus 17 and a half. That's great. That's yours. You got it. Own it. You got it. I, I mean, I'm, I, that's my pick. I'm going a different direction. I'm picking a team that lost last week. What's your Had pick? an embarrassing loss. There's a group of people that think Missouri is going to beat West Virginia by 14 and a half points. Oof. Missouri lost last week to Wyoming. Do you know who the coach at West Virginia is? It's not. Um, Neil Brown. You know where Neil Brown's been the last couple of years? UAB, wasn't he? Troy. Troy, that's right. He's done Troy. great work at Troy. Missouri is going to beat the crap out of West Virginia. They got the second best quarterback in conference. Line is again what? 14 and a half. I'm taking. They're given 14. Missouri is given 14 and a half. Minus 14 and a half. And you're taking it. I'm taking it. We both have some I still out think, there picks. I still think if Missouri beats Florida, and this kind of speaks to how weak the East is, in my opinion. If Missouri, if Missouri beats Florida, I think they're going to finish two in the SEC East after losing the opener to Wyoming. Uh, did you see that game, Missouri? I did not. I was at Texas Live, <sighs> seeing stars. They're bad. <laughs> seeing double. They're bad. Ole Miss will beat them. They're, they're that bad. They have they they, they have no speed. They're, they're, it's, it's bad. What about some of the other games? You spoke to the Clemson game mm -hmm. with Texas A and M. I'm looking forward to watching LSU in Texas. I think that's gonna be a good game. I, and it's not just based off what they did this past Saturday. I think LSU might be ready. I will give you credit on this because I watched, went back and watched some of it. Joe Burrow is, Gamer. is a little more than a game manager. Yeah. He's a tough so, kid, too. And, and I think they have the right pieces around them. Um, I, yeah, I like LSU. 
I think he's an easy kid to play for. I think that guys would rally to him. Yeah, yeah, he's not. Uh, he's not the superstar. He's just the lunch pail kind of worker that that would rally. He's a Rudy. I, what about the disaster at Neyland Stadium last week? Oh my God! Georgia State, two and ten the year before, in the Sun Belt, goes up, pops big orange, embarrassing. I mean, embarrassing. Bad. The 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 fan base is is in an uproar. They're calling for Pruitt's head. Uh, I think everybody knows how volatile the situation can be. You lose the wrong game, all of a sudden you they go didn't the, even look competitive. Didn't look prepared at all. I, but I'll you tell know, you this. And the score looks better than what it was. But I'm going to tell you this. I think they're going to beat BYU Saturday. I do. If, if they don't, his days are numbered. Yeah. If he, if, if, he, if he loses Saturday, he may not make it to midseason, seriously. I mean, There's Fulmer, one game I can go to this year and it's gonna, at Alabama. That's going to be Alabama-Tennessee game. Um, and if he loses Saturday, he, he I may be there, but he may not be. <laughs> and I hate to say it. Yeah, I know, but uh, you're right. Because, You're right. You know, my 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 homie is 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 buddies with him, and um, I, I wish him all the success. But I it, it it looked bad last week. Arkansas, Ole Miss, two pretty weak teams. Golly, that's like, I mean that that's like judging a hog contest. How, I mean, how do you know which is the prettier hog? Oof. Ole Miss got beat by Memphis last week. What by five? Fifteen ten. Memphis, I think, beat them, has beat them four out of five. Though. Memphis is not a bad team, but not bad. Ole Miss is terrible. And what, I called that, by the way. What do you think about Tulane and Auburn? Mm, it, I don't think it'll be close. There's I, a group of people that think Auburn's going to win that game by 18 points. Uh, that's some of the pros yep. that have not picked Auburn to lose, but have picked them not to cover, by the way. I mean, I, they'll win the game. I mean, there's no doubt about that. They're going to win the game. We, they, they show up, they're going to win the game. They kick off, I think I'm right, they kick off at 6.30. Yeah, it's going to be rocking so I imagine the Gus will get them to the stadium at about the, 6.15. Uh, are they they staying at La Pancha Train? I don't or know, they, man. Isn't that, isn't that Tulane's home opener? Yeah. Victory, it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a home and home series, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, Victory Tour 2019. Are you going to it? I'm going until we lose. Well, <clears throat> I did some... Videography critiquing it privately between you and I. So if you can get some more really good shots like you had mm-hmm. that I commented and complimented you on, mm-hmm. I will probably watch more than about two seconds of your video. Ah, uh, I do struggle. I apologize for that. Hey, Mitt. Is Mitt in with us? Mitt's in with us. I see him on Facebook. Hey, Mitt. Pointed it out. Hey, buddy. Hey, Dad. This is Mitt. Do you know... There's been a lot of talk about scheduling and who plays who. And I've actually got a solution for all of it that I think I think it's practical. I think it's viable. I wish they would do it. Tell me. I want to kick Missouri out of the conference. They were the last ones in. They don't really do anything in any of the revenue generating sports. I mean they're nice people. I'm not I'm not saying that. They're just <laughs> How do you know that they're nice well, people? Well, I'm assuming they're nice people. Uh <laughs> I watch SEC Network. They seem like nice people. They don't really bring anything in terms of added. What tradition do they bring? Nothing. So I want to kick them out. Are you, like, all fired up about going to Columbia, Missouri to go tailgate? I don't like their colors. Uh, I don't like anything about it. But if you kick them out, we have 13 teams. Yeah. Everybody plays everybody. 12-game season. Saban's been calling for that. And be done with it. Hey, we don't need an SEC championship game. Just, uh, uh, just play the play. You no, know that's not going on. I know. Play that out. Whoever's left standing, they are the representative to the college playoff as an automatic berth. And if you wanted to, have these committees that vote all these teams in, I think it's real easy. Power five, you take five, you take five champions and three at large. And you tell Notre Dame to get at a conference or you'll be out forever. Notre Dame's the biggest fraud in college football, Why can't by the way. we bring Notre Dame in the SEC? They don't get want to. They wouldn't do that. But, but then you couldn't play everybody. You'd have to have a 13-game season. Unless you want to play 13 games, I don't know if they'll let you. But right now, everybody has 12 regular season games. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Back when we had the last expansion, or maybe it was the one before that. I can't remember. But anyway, we courted some – we courted, I want to say Clemson, Florida State, maybe West Virginia, I thought. 
I think I might remember it that way. I think I know that Florida State was was, and they chose approached. not to. They wanted to, those teams wanted to stay in the yeah. ACC because of the caliber of competition. Uh, how great would that have been if Florida State would have been in instead of Missouri? Oof. I mean, they've kind of fallen hard times, but who knows what would have happened if they would have gotten in because the recruiting base is natural. If it was your decision to make, would you sign off on that, everybody playing everybody and seeing how it shakes out, or do you like cupcakes? I I mean, I like like cupcakes. Yeah, yeah, I know you like But as far as playing, um, I don't know. I'd have to think about that because if you do that, you're going to lose some traditional rivalries. What would you lose? It's traditional. Y'all don't play anybody home and home. So what are you losing? We don't have to. All right, so I don't know what, what what rivalry you're you're losing. Well, I mean, you, you can't. First of all, you're not going to have a 13 game regular season. I right, see. I hate that. It's basic math. You have 13 teams. You can't play yourself. You play everybody else. You got 12 games. Yeah, right. So it's 12. But but we always play in the championship game. If you win the SEC, you would go. Yeah. Well, everybody, how, how do you how do you going to determine who wins it? By who wins the most games. And what if it comes out to a tie? Have a tie. Well, who won head to head? I don't know. I don't like it. Oh, you don't like it. I just I don't. you love beating up on Duke. You love beating up on New Mexico no, State. I mean, we, y'all are playing Kent State and because Tulane we're, because we're forced to, and Oregon because we're forced to. How are you forced to? We're forced to because nobody else will play us. <laughs> sure we'll play it. Auburn's always played anybody anywhere, and none of these games under my proposal, none of these games under my proposal, are we playing at Legion Field? You can take that off the off the. Uh, uh-uh, you have I mean, y'all y'all cost us the Legion Field yeah. anyway. So <laughs> Pat Fain I did. Uh, but okay, Alabama's schedule, uh, you know, according to the poll makers, is not as strong as Auburn's. But you can't, you won't really know that until the at least halfway through the season. Do I think Alabama has a good football team? I think they got some nice pieces. Yeah, we're a, a top ten program. I don't know that we're number two right now. I mean, it's a, it's a nice little team. All I, I can, all I, all I can give my opinion on is what I saw Saturday. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But I still think this, and I posted it. I think if Duke were to play Tulane, Duke would mop the floor with Tulane. You're wrong, sir. You're wrong. Okay. My Tulane's team. won six. Or, okay, that's right. That's right. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got a poll. Mm-hmm. The only one I'm worried about is mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, I'm that's, telling that's, you. that's the only one I care about. I'm making Duke, a statement. Duke would not beat Tulane. I don't think Missouri fans are nice people. <laughs> that's your opinion. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I have just kidding. I don't know I any have, Missouri fans. I have a lot of concerns about Tua. Um, and what's your concerns about Tua? I'm not sure how good he is. Did you read the article that I posted? I probably didn't. I'm sure. Go back and read it. I don't think he's that good of a player. He, he, he'll be a first round draft pick. I think he has the luxury of having the best quartet of wide receivers in the country. And that includes the guys that plays on Sunday. I think there's guys who play on Sunday who are individually better, but I don't think an NFL team has four receivers as good as Alabama's. I really don't. I don't like the way those guys catch with one hand. They should be taught. They should be coached up to use two. You mean whatever? So you mean to tell me you can go take a quarterback? You can take Tulane's quarterback and put him in Alabama system, and he'll be his. No, but let me let me tell you the thing that the biggest problem I have. With, but but with, what you're trying to do is you're trying to downplay no, and negate I'm not, Tua. I'm not based on the talent let me, that goes on around. Let it. me tell you the the biggest problem I have with Tua, and it kind of is in line with what I think is Bo Nix's greatest attribute that we have seen thus far, and what? that could change. Okay, and I'm going to go back to the it stuff. A couple of years ago, Jalen Hurts was determined to be the starting quarterback at Alabama University. <laughs> it's the University of Alabama. He took his team, his offensive team, down the field against Clemson for a touchdown that I think put him up 38 to 30-something with about a minute 40 to play in the game, somewhere thereabouts. Alabama, on paper, and according to some people statistically, had the number one ranked defense in the country. Right. And then Steve Renfro runs the greatest three-yard out in the history of the game. Clemson wins the national championship, and that's Jalen's fault. Okay? but now, no, Jalen, hey, Jalen's hey, fault? Jalen was a true freshman. I'm going to make a bigger point here. Jalen was a true freshman. When Steve Renfro scored the game-winning touchdown for the national championship, do you know what he did? And I'm a people watcher. You can YouTube this, folks. It happened. <laughs> do you know what Jalen Hurst did? He ran across the field, found Deshaun Watson, shook his hand, hugged his neck, and congratulated him. 
Heartbreaking loss. Is that fair to say? I watched it with you. I know what it did to you. <laughs> Heartbreaking loss, and he still had it here, and he still had it here to do that. I'm, I'm fixing to make What's a point. What's that got to do I'm with Tua? I'm to make a point. The following year, Jalen Hurts is determined to be the uh, has been determined to be the starting quarterback at Alabama University. Oh, it's University of Alabama. He gets into the championship game against Georgia and has a subpar outing. Is that fair to say for the first half? Uh, would you say, agree? I, don't, I wouldn't listen to you. Would you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay, agree. they pushed the button and brought in Tua, and the rest is history in terms of who won that game. I agree a hundred percent. Had they not made the change, they would have lost that ball game. Him being hurt had nothing to do with okay. it. Okay. Do you know what happened after the game? Right after the game, uh, do you, th- you understand? Get this. No, because like, I, because I don't. I'm, stop paint, I'm, Tua. Listen, I'm, I'm painting the picture. Okay. Georgia lost the national championship on the last play of the game. The overtime pass, second and 27. Hadn't won a which chance. Tua come in and take it. Right. I'm, I'm going there. I'm getting there. I'm okay. getting there. Okay. Georgia hadn't won a national championship since 1980. Mm-hmm. The last play of the game, their season ends with Alabama winning. Mm-hmm. You know what Jake Fromm did? He ran across. YouTube it, folks. He ran across the field, found Tua, shook his hand, hugged his neck, and congratulated him. As a true freshman. And let me guess. Hold on. No, I'm, I'm going to get there. I, I just want to ruin I, your punchline. No, 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 don't do that. Okay, Let me paint ahead. the picture. Paint it, Picasso. This past year, Tua has a subpar outing in the SEC championship game. Got hurt. Wasn't playing well. He put Jalen in. If he hadn't have put Jalen in, I would argue that Alabama wouldn't have won that game. If he hadn't have put Jalen in, he'd have to put the third string quarterback I, I, in. I'm saying but Jalen bailed him out. I'm going to just, just go with me. Well, that's what, you, that's what he's no, on scholarship no. to do. All right, all right, okay. So in the championship game, at halftime, and take the bammer out of you just for a minute, if you can. <laughs> it ha- at halftime of the, of the mythical national championship game, what led you to believe that Alabama could possibly win that foot, got football game with two at quarterback? What did you see in the first half that led you to believe Alabama could win with him taking the snaps? Whether he was hurt or not, I don't know. I should have asked Jeff. But he was terrible. <laughs> He was terrible. Here's the deal. I don't think, but I think at a bigger point, I don't think it. if you put Hurts in, they would have won that game either. All I know is when he had a decision to make the year before, he pushed the button. And for whatever reason, Jalen Hurts got him out of the fire in Atlanta in the SEC championship and chose not to give him the same opportunity the next week. But here's the bigger part of the story, and this is what leads me to believe that two is really not any good. So are you second-guessing the GOAT? I'm not second-guessing coaching? him. I'm telling him what he did wrong. If somebody else send him the clip. I'm sure but, Ken probably got it back. But here's somewhere. the deal. Here's the deal. All right. When that game was over with, and Tua had two and a half hours to prepare for the ass whipping. <laughs> he had two and a half hours to prepare for the ass whipping. Yeah. And you know what he did when the game was over with? He sat right there on that bench and didn't move. YouTube. Well, he kind of had a broke ankle. I don't care. Get up and go <laughs> shake Trevor Lawrence's hand. Trevor Lawrence deserved it. Trevor Lawrence deserved it. Jake Fromm did it the year before. Jalen Hurts did it the year before that. And that's what every competitor does. But he sat there on that bench and he pouted like he was shocked they lost. You know, it was 56 to 12, man. This is NCAA. 56 to 12. Not YMCA. Hey. <laughs> you know that, right? Come on, man. I'm just telling you, I'm watching Tua. I got my eye on him. Well, obviously, you're freaking obsessed with the cable him. guy. I- <laughs> Cable guy. I'll take my guy. I'm happy with Bo. Well, you need to be. He he pulled you out of the fire. He got you in the fire, but then he pulled he you did. back That's out. That's right. Part of it. Take the good of the bad. I'm off that. He had two I, I've, I've kind of given you where I'm at, mindset-wise, with that guy. And I'll keep watching him. I'll give him a chance to get in the conversation. He, he's getting you worked up. He's no Jalen Hurts, I can tell you that. Hmm? Who plays at Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, he does. Loves him. Lost, lost, lost his job at Alabama. I, I Do you know why Jalen lost his starting job at Alabama? I don't like him being misled. How was he misled? That man went into his family's living room 14 and a half hours away from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and said, I'm going to take care of your son, I'm going to treat him with respect, and I'm going to give him opportunity. He and he did. There. Not in the finals, he didn't. And he did. I don't see it that way. <laughs> and he did. Gracious. 
How good was Jeff Allen? Let's go throw him in some ice and cool him down. Jeff was great. I did get a little hot. Jeff was great. Jeff was great. I'd like to catch up with him a little bit later in the year. You know who we need to get on here? He's good people. Who? Scott Cochran. I don't know. And then we need to mix in the Auburn band here and there. I mean, you know, if the if the most distinguished football program in the last 150 years has time for their people to come on and be on our show, yeah. I mean, certainly Auburn should. I'll work on it. Work on it. It was fun catching up with you. Yeah. I'm glad the Pinto made it back. How'd Stokes like to drive? Did he sleep on the way back? Well, I'll tell you what. I think he was awake for two and a half hours well, of, the, of the 23-hour trip. Yeah, to be young and be able to sleep. Yeah, really. Certainly want to thank our executive producer, Ken James. He's the one that gets us out there, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, the website. Hey, DFW. Lindsay said, hey, Dad. <laughs> Wash your mouth. <laughs> hey, Lindsay. But uh, another War Eagle Roll Tide in the books. Hopefully we haven't run everybody off. Uh, if you would, if you feel led, like and share the video, tag some friends. Let's get back in here next Thursday night and do it all over again. Who knows the, who the guest may be? It could be you. Call in. Call in. I'd love to talk to somebody. Y'all have a great weekend. War Eagle. Roll time. Hey, give me all you got. I want your money, not your lap. But if you try to make a move, I won't think twice. I told him you can have my cash, but first you know I got to ask. But maybe you want to live this kind of life.